We're going to give you practical steps to start seeing your prayers answered. Yeah, so I, I would say, and I love that you covered it. If Jesus, the Son of God, the mm. anointed Christ, came to the earth and couldn't thrive without prayer, if Jesus did that, and Jesus said, a disciple's not above his, his teacher, That's nor good. is a servant above his master. But it's enough for a disciple to become like his teacher or a servant like his master. If Jesus needed uh, the power produced in prayer to ensure success in his life and in his ministry, how much more should we, as we're not the only begotten son of God, we're, we're adopted children of God. We've been uh, ushered into that family now. Come on. But if Christ showed the example of the necessity, the essential, uh, the, the essentiality of prayer, how much more should we be given to prayer? You know, David said in the Old Testament, I give myself to prayer. Wow. So now that we understand that prayer is essential, Mark chapter, uh, Matthew chapter six says, when you pray, when you give, when you fast, doesn't say if you pray, doesn't say when you feel like praying, it says when you pray, which is showing it's like a given thing. It's implied. You're going to pray. If you're a follower of Christ, you're going to pray. If you don't pray, you're going to suffer. If you do pray, you're going to see things work for you. It's like people that don't pray, things Never go right. People that do pray, it's like coincidentally, things go right. There's like a, an, aura, an aura of favor on them. Things just seem to like line up for them. Because like Isaiah said, you're securing favor with God. That's the only favor that matters. He is the master helper. He is the helper of your destiny. Without his help, those that labor, labor in vain. Those that attempt to stay awake and guard the city. I, uh, Psalm 127, they stay awake in vain. If you're trying, it, 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 if you're trying to put in more hard work to produce something God's called you to do, it's not in hard work. It's going to be an intense, passionate prayer that a grace will be released to you to fulfill what God's called you to do. You know, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says he was dripping sweat droplets of blood because he knew what was about to happen the scripture says in luke's account and being in agony he prayed more fervently when you feel agony when you feel stress when you feel sorrow of heart when you feel anxiety fill your heart it's not the time to complain about your situation it's not the time prayer that's a big thing prayer is not a venting session prayer is not your diary where you're just unloading all your feelings Proverbs says, a foolish man vents all his feelings. It's a wise man that holds them back. Prayer is not you coming before God and, and just venting. This Why is this going wrong? Why is this uh, upside down? Why didn't you do this? How come you haven't fulfilled this? You do that, you're going to irritate God. Because the Bible says, neither complain as some of them complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Prayer is our divine right and privilege to approach God to 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 for his intervention in the affairs of man. Can you say amen? So what are some prayer mistakes, most common prayer mistakes that people make? I'm going to say number one, and uh, it's not in my notes, but it just came to my spirit, is not entering into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. If you just jump into prayer, beating your chest like some nutcase, God, how, I mean, you try and get to like a president's office, just try and storm into the Oval Office and start yelling at the president. See how that'll turn out for you. See how, 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 how that'll work. You'll be escorted out of the Oval Office, out of the White House, and get thrown out and banned. And if the, um, someone who, own, who, who uh, holds a natural office, like the president of a nation, has such an order, and decorum in, in approaching him. How much more is the king of the universe have a, a specific process that you have to go through to approach his throne? And part of that, Psalm 100 says, we have to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and into his courts with praise. John chapter 11, before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, this skips over most people's attention. But before he raised Lazarus from the dead, before he, 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 he went for his miracle, he said 
in the presence of all, Father, I thank you. He first took time to thank God the Father because he heard him and he said, I know that you always hear me, but for the sake of those nearby, I thank you that you always hear me. And then he called forth Lazarus. You know, you look at, um, at Paul and Silas. They were praying, but then they realized, man, we haven't even thanked God yet. While they were in prison in Acts chapter 16. So they switched on the, 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 the switch of praise. And they started to just thank God. They were in the midst of a, they were in a dark dungeon, locked away, scheduled for execution in the morning. And the Bible says they began to praise God with voices loud and high so that the prisoners heard them. What happened when they praised God? The power of God shook that found the foundation of that prison. Every chains were unlocked. Everyone's prison doors were open. There are things you've been complaining about that just 15 minutes of praise would have ushered in God's presence to deal it out in your favor. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. The scripture says in Ephesians that in every Thing. We are to give thanks to God the Father, for this is His will for us in Christ Jesus. This is God's will for us. It's His will. God, I don't know what your will is. Praise Him. That's clearly outlined in the Bible. Let everything that has breath, breath praise the Lord. The Bible says that uh, David, before he did anything, the reason why he had supernatural victory every step of the way was because he was a praise addict. He said, let... Um, uh, let praise continually be offered from my mouth. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be offered out of my mouth. Hebrews says, we are to continuously offer up the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. And when you do the will of God in giving him thanks, the Bible says in Hebrews, after you've done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You're not entitled to asking anything until you have lifted up holy hands without wrath or doubting and said, Father, I thank you. Until you thank God for what he's done, you're not entitled for what he'll do. Until you thank God for the past victories, you're not going to ever walk into present day victory. Until you begin to learn to lift up hands and say, Father, the death I should have died, thank you per for preserving me from it. Father, the sickness that should have killed me, thank you for healing me from it. Father, the marriage that was in shambles, thank you for restoring it for me. Father, my children that weren't serving the Lord, thank you that they've come home and that they're serving the Lord. Father, the power of the lion, the power of the bear that was sent to destroy me, thank you for delivering me from those things. And I will put an assurance in you and a boldness that God who didn't fail you then is not about to start now. I tell you, God who didn't fail you then, some of you need a reminder that the same God who delivered you from the paw of the lion is the same God that's going to deliver you from this Goliath that's been mouthing off at you. There's nothing impossible with God. Do you think you finally have found a case that God is worried about? Do you think you're that special? You're not that special. There is no problem such as is common to man. And God is faithful. He will provide a way of escape. But you'll never get that way of escape until you, want, you walk through the gates of praise.